everyone, welcome back to my channel. Hope you're all doing well. Today's video is going to be a review, swatches, and tutorial all about the new Jaclyn Hill and Morphe palette. I know there are a ton of videos going around YouTube right now with tutorials and swatches and reviews on this palette, but I wanted to give you all my review as well because I know there's a lot of controversy about this palette. The restock date was just announced, so it will be restocked very soon, which is why I wanted to make this video for you all. Just in case you all wanted to hear my opinions as well as wanted to see a look using it. I have been using this palette for the past couple of days, so I definitely can give you guys a review and my thoughts but I do want to show you all some swatches as well as a tutorial using it. I've seen a ton of videos and tutorials so far using a bunch of the bright colors for their looks which I think are absolutely gorgeous. I will post the look that I did on Instagram down below using the palette with all of those gorgeous colors but today I thought I would demo a lot of the neutral colors since I think a lot of people on an everyday basis are going to be wearing a lot of the neutral colors that are in this palette. So if you were at all interested in hearing my thoughts on this palette as well as seeing some swatches and a tutorial on how to get this look then just keep on watching. So I'm going to give you all a little background about the palette and then I'll go into swatches and my thoughts on it. So this is what the box looks like. It has Jacqueline's whole name on it as well as Morphe and then it has four of her pictures as well as a little paragraph that she wrote about her palette. All of the ingredients for this palette are listed on the side of the box and then when you open up the box this did come in like a bubble wrap sleeve. This looks exactly the same as the front of the box and then on the back it says Morphe times Jacqueline and it has her initials kind of all over. The one thing I don't like about this is the fact that it is white. It, I mean, it looks really beautiful with like the foiled lettering, but I do know for a fact that it will get really dirty and palettes just in my collection get really dirty when, especially when I use them. I already have like stains from touching it all over the palette. I did want to mention this is the same packaging and cardboard as the Kathleen Lights and Morphe collab. So if you have this palette and you're wondering kind of what it feels like, this is the same packaging as the Jaclyn Hill palettes. So this palette does cost $38 without a coupon code. A lot of people's coupon codes work. I'm not affiliated at all with Morphe so I don't have one but there are 35 shades in here and when you do the cost breakdown per shadow it's only a dollar and nine cents which is pretty good. You do get the same amount of product in this palette compared to the other 35 pro palettes that Morphe has like the 35O or the 35B so the net weight of this palette is the same. Before I forget I do know she just mentioned a restock date for this palette. It will be available again on July 18th at 8 a.m. Pacific Standard Time and 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Make sure you guys set an alarm because this will sell out fast again. I know this sold out in like 45 minutes. I think they only sold 200,000 palettes, which to me was a little weird because she has such a big following. I would have thought that there would have been more. I do know they are also selling them in store. So if you are in the Burbank area, I do think they will restock in store if they haven't already. The price of this palette again is $38 compared to the $29.99 price point of the other 35 palettes, which I think this is quite a big step up. I mean, for the price increase of that much for the same amount of product in each palette is a little bit steep, but when you do the cost breakdown per shout out it's still a lot cheaper than a lot of other palettes out there on the market. I first heard that this was going to be a new formula of eyeshadow and then I heard that the formula is pretty much the same as of these ones. I will leave the formula kind of comparisons on the screen so you guys can see. The only difference with this palette in comparison to the ingredient list of these two is that this one has kaolin in it which is a Chinese clay which is really just used for soaking up the moisture or the oils in the eyeshadows. So supposedly these aren't new formulas. The actual shadows are pressed differently which I can kind of see because because when I usually get limited edition things from MAC, sometimes the powders are pressed too hard so it's actually really hard to get a good color payoff when you're using either a brush or a finger swatch. I did notice a difference in the formula of these ones compared to the other Morphe 35 Pro palette. These matte shades do feel a lot easier to blend out. They do have quite a bit of kick up but I do not have too much fallout on my lid and they are super super easy to blend. Some of these lighter colors as you will see in my tutorial, you do have to build them up especially some of these crease colors but they are really pretty. I've only only used 15 out of the 35 shades in this palette so far. The only one I've had an issue with so far was this one right here. It's called Jada. It's a really beautiful color but when I tried blending it out into my crease and really just buffing it out it was super super patchy. It looks really pretty smudged on the lower lash line when you don't have to do too much blending with it but this was the only one I had an issue with so far. Like the other Morphe palettes this is also made in China and there are no parabens in this formula so I just wanted to point that out because I know some people do not want to buy shadows or makeup in general with parabens in it. I also want to talk about the names of this palette. When I watched her video, it sounded like she spent so much time naming all of these shadows, which I think is really awesome, but I only got this little card in my box when I got my palette, and I was a little let down that none of the shades were actually on the palette anywhere. I mean, they had all of this space on the back, and I get that's cutting costs because it can be a lot more money to print shadow names on the back of palettes. Because I want to know what shadows I'm using and the names of it, I just taped this to my palette. There is a little blur 
blurb from Jacqueline about this palette to her subscribers behind this, but I just really wanted to be able to see what colors I am using. You could put it on the back here. I've seen people do both. I know some people didn't get this little card in their box and people were complaining about that. I did notice that on the Morphe website, under the palette, you can download a PDF of all of the names of the palette, which is exactly like this. I do think it's going to be crucial if you want to recreate people's looks on YouTube and they're using these color names that you want to make sure you're using the right colors for tutorials and such. Before I get into my final thoughts on this palette, I do want to show you some swatches, but I first want to just show you the layout of this palette because I think the colors in this are absolutely gorgeous. A lot of these remind me of the 35O, but when you do compare the palette to it, it is quite different and some of these colors are quite unique, which I really like. And I do love the fact that she did include some pops of color in there as well as some cool tones. So if you guys want to see any other looks using this palette, let me know down below what you guys want to see. But just looking at this really makes me inspired with all the color selection in there and I did not think that I was going to be so inspired when I first originally bought this palette. So that makes me really happy. So I'm just going to do finger swatches today. I know there's so much controversy with swatching palettes now on YouTube and I'm going to be honest with you guys. I get the whole finger swatches versus brush swatches thing but I want to tell you honestly the reason I include tutorials and demos in my reviews is because I want you all to see the products in action especially for eyeshadows. I think it's so important to actually see how they work on the eyes because I've swatched some things with both a brush and a finger and they swatched horribly and then they performed super well on the eyes or vice versa they swatched amazing with my finger and then I went in with a brush and I'm like what the hell so I just wanted to point that out I do know that there's a lot of controversy and a lot of videos going around with swatching these palettes and some are good some are bad it really depends on how you're swatching them as well so that's why I really like including tutorials and demos using this because at the end of the day to me it just really matters and how well it's gonna apply to my eyes since that's where I'm gonna be wearing the shadows so I just want to point that out I'm just gonna be showing you finger swatches purely to show you the colors not in terms of the formula of the shadows because I do go a little bit more in depth with that in the tutorial but I do really like a lot of these colors and a lot of the formulas of this again I think that they are improved compared to the other 35O formulas some of these shimmery shades you do need to wet your brush which I don't mind the ones I used today I did not I just used a concealer base and I had no issues with it when I want something super foiled on my lid whether it's a good shadow or not I typically go in with a fix plus or a setting spray or something to really intensify it again whether it is good or bad so that's just personal preference a lot of these do perform very very well on the eyes in terms of the pigmentation and just how foiled they look on the lid so I'm gonna swatch this by row starting with the lightest and then moving all the way to the deepest this first color is called in light next color is called beam this matte shade is called silk cream next we have mfeo this color is called faint this next one is one of my favorites it's called sissy and last but not least we have little lady these top two colors are more satiny shades you also have two mattes and three foils moving on to the next row the first shade we have is creamsicle next color is called butter this next one is called pooter this next shade is called pukey after that we have hunts this foiled shade is called firework and then the last color in this row is called queen so this row has five mattes and two metallics moving on to the third row this first color is called obsessed next we have smoky but neutral this one is called hillster this next matte is called Roxanne. This one is called Jax. Jax isn't that pigmented. Next we have Buns. And the last color for this row is called Cran Apple. Here is the third row. Getting into some of the colorful colors, this first color is called Royalty. Next we have Twerk. After that, the shade is called Hustle. This is one of my favorite colors, it's called Meeks. This one is called 24-7, it has like chunks of sparkle in there. This matte shade is called Chip. Last color in this row is called Mocha. There is the fourth row. Moving on to the last row, this first color is called Pool Party. Next we have Jada. After that, this one's called Diva. This really pretty forest green is called Enchanted. This one is called Central Park. Next color is called Soda Pop. And then last but not least, we have Abyss, which is the black in the palette. 
So now that you've seen all the swatches of this palette, I do really, really like this. I was not expecting to like it as much as I thought I was. Again, I didn't think I was going to be super inspired with this palette, but I am. A lot of these really pretty shimmery colors also have like specks of glitter in them, which I think is really unique, as well as new from Morphe. A lot of the other palettes do not have that. So I do like the fact that they did include some other shades in here. They are a little bit more glittery if you do want to really foil them on the eyes. A lot of these shades do remind me of other colors from Makeup Geek and Anastasia, as well as MAC. So if you all want to see a dupe video, let me know down below. I can do dupes for all of these in individual shadows from other brands if you do not want to purchase Morphe shadows. I am not gaining anything from this review at all. I'm not affiliated with Morphe, nor am I affiliated with Jacqueline. I'm really just here for the makeup. So all drama and opinions aside, I do really like this palette. Some of the colors, again, don't swatch the best when you swatch them with the brush, but on the eyes, they are really, really pretty. So I will continue to use this as well as post Instagram photos using this palette for some other looks for you all. So I do think this palette is worth it and I would recommend getting it if you have been looking at this and you have been eyeing it, you are a fan of Jaclyn, you like Morphe, or if you just want a really beautiful palette with a lot of good colors in it and have a lot of inspiration for different looks, I would definitely recommend this. I will leave some other influencers coupon codes down below if you wanted to use their coupon code when getting this palette restocked on the 18th. But again, for the price, I think you cannot beat it. It's a gorgeous palette and I cannot wait to keep using it. So now that you've seen the finger swatches as well as hearing my thoughts and review on this palette, I did want to show you again the tutorial using these shadows with brushes. I will leave all the other products in terms of makeup and brushes that I use for the tutorial down below if you guys are interested. But if you want to see how this palette performs on the eyes, then just keep on watching. So I've already started off by priming my eyes. I just used my MAC Painterly Paint Pot. Now normally after I prime, I do like to set my primer with a creamy matte shade, but this palette does not have one. So I'm going to go in with a separate shadow. This is by Wet n Wild. It is called Brulee. And this is just going to set the primer. I don't want the eyeshadows to skip, so I always do this. So now for the eyeshadow, I'm going to take the palette. I've already used a lot of these bright colors, so I thought I would do something a little bit more neutral. I really want to do like a glitter half cut crease. So I'm going to take this shade. This is called MFEO. It is this color right here in the middle. And I'm going to take this on a Morphe E27 brush and just put this right in my crease. There is a good amount of kick up on these lighter shades. And as you can see, I do have to go back in and build it up, which isn't a bad thing. But some of these lighter ones, you do have to build up so you can actually see the color into my crease, but it is blending out really nicely. It's really pretty. And I'm taking this from outer corner all the way to the inner corner as well. I'm now gonna go in with the color Creamsicle, which is this one right here. I'm just gonna use that same Morphe brush. As you guys can see, there is pickup that I'm getting from the shadows, but I'm not having any fallout on my face which is nice so this is gonna go underneath that first shade still in our crease I'm also going to wing this one out a little bit, kind of like flicking it out towards the tape and this one is going to go from our outer corner all the way to our inner corner these are blending really, really nicely together. They're not becoming muddy or anything. Now I'm going to take this color right here. This one is called Roxanne, and I'm going to use that on a Morphe E28. This one's just a little bit more tapered. It's a little smaller than the first brush I used. Look at how pigmented this is. Can you guys see that? And I barely touched the palette, so I'm really going to tap this one off. This one, I'm going to point my brush kind of straight out, kind of pointing into my eye. And this is going to go right into the socket of my crease. Now on an even smaller Morphe brush, I'm going to take the color Chip, which is a little bit more of a cool toned like chocolatey brown, and this is a Morphe M433. This I'm going to put right below, kind of in my outer V. I'm going to start like smoking it out back here but I'm also kind of placing this into my crease. The tape is really nice too, cause you're not gonna go farther out than that. So it's a good guideline because we're not gonna be doing any winged liner today. I just really wanna focus on the eyeshadow. I'm gonna go back in with the E28 with no additional product. I'm just gonna blend out these edges. You can definitely stop here with the amount of like smokiness, but I do want to try out the black in this palette. This one is called Abyss. I'm going to take the tiniest amount of this on that same Morphe M433. I don't know how pigmented this is going to be, and I'm just going to put it right in the outer corner. Now 
Now for the cut crease part, I'm gonna be taking my Tarte Shape Tape Concealer. For this, I'm just gonna take a flat concealer brush. This one happens to be my Morphe. I also really like the one from Anastasia. And I'm just going to be placing this into my crease because I want this to be really sharp. So I'm going to put it down first and then I like to kind of map out where I want to bring it up. So I like to start in my inner corner. And then I like to kind of naturally just drag it outwards following my crease. You can also bring this up a little bit higher if you don't have as much lid space so you actually can see the color, which is what I'm going to do just a tad. So now that we have that, I'm going to do one eye, then I'll do the other. I'm going to go back in with the 433 brush. I'm going to take Chip again, that kind of purpley color, and I want to kind of blend this in to the concealer just so it's nice and no harsh lines. Now for the fun part, I'm gonna take the color Meeks, which is this bronzy color. And I'm gonna use that on a Dallium Tool 733 brush. And I'm gonna pack this on. I'm not gonna use any Fix Plus or anything because I want you guys just to see what it looks like over the concealer. And this is gonna go in the middle of my lid. I'm gonna bring it all the way up to that concealer. You can kind of drag it into the chip color. And then for the inner corner, I'm gonna take Queen, which is a beautiful rusty gold. And I'm just gonna flip the brush on the other side and I'm gonna place this right on the inner corner. I'm gonna kind of drag it into the other shade just so they kind of mix together a little bit. The blend is a lot nicer. To finish off my cut crease, I'm gonna take the Urban Decay Heavy Metal Glitter Liner. This is in the color Midnight Cowboy. I'm just gonna take this and place it where we kind of outlined our cut crease, but only stop about two thirds in. So I'm gonna start on the inner corner and go out. I put on my lashes and I also finished off the rest of my face. I wanted to finish off the lower lash line. So I'm gonna take the color MFEO on my Morphe E27 brush. This is just gonna go underneath our lashes from outer corner to inner corner. Now going back in with the E28, I'm gonna take Roxanne again and I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm just not gonna bring it as far into my inner corner. I'm just gonna start from the outer corner and bring it about right in the middle of my eye. I'm gonna go back in with my M433 brush. I'm using my Veramona color switch to take off the black from this shadow. And I'm gonna go back in with the chip color, just a tiny bit of this. And this is gonna go on the outer third of our eye. So I'm gonna take it as close to my lash line as possible and not bring it super far into my inner corner. So now I'm going to work on the inner corner. The only color I'm going to take is the queen color, which is this one. I'm not going to go in with the darker one since it's already pretty smoky on the lower lash line. So I'm just going to go back in with the same Delium Tools brush. I'm just going to focus this on the inner corner of my eye. I now want to go into a highlighting color for both my brow bone and my inner corner because I do feel like it's pretty smoky. So I want to try something that's a little bit more bright. So I'm going to go into the color Beam. This one reminds me of MAC 9. So I'm going to take that on a Sigma brush. This is the E30. It's a pencil brush and I'm going to place this right in the inner corner of my eye to really just like brighten everything up. I'm going to go in that same brush and the same color beam again. I'm just going to take a little bit of this and this is going to be our brow bone highlight color. So that's gonna be it for this video. I hope you all really liked it. I hope it was helpful. I really wanted to use every single color in this palette before I put up my review just so it's really thorough, but I wanted to make sure that I get a video up no matter what. So I do know the restock is happening very, very soon. So again, I will keep updating you all on YouTube as well as on Instagram with my thoughts on this palette. But right now I have really been enjoying it. The lasting power on them is amazing. They're creamy, they blend out really nicely, and they are very pigmented when I use them on my eyes. Leave me some comments down below on your thoughts on this palette, whether you have it and you like it, whether you think you're gonna be getting it or you're gonna pass on it and why. I always love hearing from all of you so leave your comments down below for me. Again, give this video a thumbs up if you liked it as well as subscribe if you haven't already. Thank you again so much for watching. I love you all so very much and I'll see you all in my next video. Bye!